Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to another episode of Unpacked Show right on Cafero.tv. We're more than welcome, and today we are very privileged to be hosting two amazing ladies uh, that have a great story to share with us. And uh, I would love to say, please, you're more than welcome to, to the Unpacked Show today. Please, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. Uh, just to start with, maybe you help us, you know, further introduce yourselves, uh, who you are, and uh, we'll, I think we'll, we'll take it on from there. Thank you. My name is Peace Kutesa. Okay. I'm a co-founder of Zimba Women. All right. Yes. Good. Uh, my name is Sharifa Tumusime, mm -hmm. and I'm a co-founder for Zimba Women. Co-founder. Perfect. All right. Uh, my name is Newton Bayo, and I'll be your host. Uh, so, to start the discussion, we'll have to first understand, what is Zimba? women all about you know i keep hearing zimba 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 what is it all about well i think we should just look at the basic terms okay zimba is to build mm -hmm. it's ugandan uh, it falls across many tribes it's always zimba zimba no matter your tribe to zimba is to build okay and then zimba women is to build women okay yeah. so that is actually the genesis of the name zimba women that's how it came about all right, quite interesting. So, uh, you know, how did the team come about, uh, you know, come about to, to start building this whole concept of building women? How did it come? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, it's a strange story, actually. Sharif and I both became mothers at a, well, somewhat young age. So we met through this mother's group and we used to share so many ideas. Um, on her part, she was running a business. She would tell us about more Tell us more about that later. Mm -hmm. uh, on my part, I was mainly just running a group on Facebook of young mothers sharing ideas and challenges on raising a child in this generation. I realized that we had common challenges, and one of the things that really stood out for me was empowerment. Many mothers were struggling because they didn't have a source of income to look after their children because you realize that if we rely on just the men, then we lose our power to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And yet parenting should be a two-people decision. Correct. So for me, that's one of the things which really inspired me in uh, helping these women and helping each other to start businesses. So we started running our businesses online, okay. just within our Facebook group, because we had like a thousand members. Okay. And uh, from there, you know, I met Sharifa. Uh, she'll tell us her part of the story. Okay. And somehow one day we got talking and realized we can do better okay. than just Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, because another thing that stood out is we are both um, tech people, okay. and realized we don't have we didn't have mentors earlier on in our careers, and um, we realized why can't we be these mentors? Because if you Google influential Ugandan women, you're getting either uh, politicians or musicians. No shade to the musicians, by the way, but yeah, <laughs> that's it. And okay. then we want our daughters to have better to have better role models. So that and the business part of it is what inspired us to start Zimba. Okay. Yes. Maybe you'll hear a little bit from uh, <coughs> Sharifa. Yeah, because Zimba has a commercial aspect to it. So I had um, what's a baby store. Okay. So it was a physical location. It mm -hmm. was a proper physical store shop at Nadubega. And it went, it was working well for so it's two years. Meaning, when you say it was, meaning it's not there anymore. It's not there physically anymore. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I had it for two years, but at the same time, I was fully employed at MTN. Okay. And I was going to school. So I had, and I'm a, I was a mom at the same time. Okay. So, so many things going on, and the shop eventually collapsed. But I had a Facebook page for that shop, and it was really, really popular. It <coughs> has over 10K likes. So orders kept coming in still for stuff from the store, and by then I had shut it down. So I started delivering stuff. So I was mm -hmm. like, why don't I? like set a website for this so i built an actual portal for it because i'm in computer science so i have that knowledge um and then the store was really the online store really popped and was i was getting <coughs> orders from burundi from tanzania so i was making a lot of money I actually quit my job much more than actually the physical shop. much more than the physical okay yeah <clears throat> so i focused on just the online store okay and then we started talking at that time i was just doing the baby store so we started talking with peace <coughs> and at that time we were getting a lot of requests from women to okay you're doing you uh, you tell people and they're like what you're living off a website how so they're like yeah i sell my things online and yeah so we were like let's actually make a company out of this let's actually start building platforms for people to sell to trade online to showcase their services and things like that and then simba was born 
quite interesting. Yeah. So uh, that brings me to another question. Is Zimba only for the female gender? No, okay. we actually <laughs> we've actually done stuff for men. Um, my best example is Hair by Ziva. We managed <sighs> his platform for a while. Yeah, so it's not just for women, but the uh, uh, business development, the capacity building is for women only. Thank God, men are represented. I was, <laughs> you know, thinking finally who will think of men this time because every program runs out, you know, towards women. But that was quite an amazing initiative by the two of you. But I would like to further know how long have you been in existence at Zimba? Uh, we've been in existence for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. We started in January 2015. January 2015? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we started off with about 10 women and we've managed to grow our membership to about 526. Okay. Yeah, to be exact. Wow. Yeah, we have membership in Kenya, mm -hmm. in Rwanda and in Tanzania. Okay. Yeah. Recently we got a few requests for Congo, but we haven't yet added them to our platform yet. Okay. Yes. Wow. So, but, uh, so what are you doing, you know, further as, as <laughs> uh, you know, Zimba women, what are you exactly doing? You've talked about inspiring women, mm -hmm. building them, but I'm sure there's more that you're more engaged in, considering there's a recent uh, you know, event that was just ended, very successful, uh, and I was very happy to be part of it. But what more does Zimba do? What exactly does Zimba do? You know, people want to know Zimba, Zimba, Zimba women, yes. Oh, sure, you want to answer the same time, that's all right. <laughs> okay, Sharifa, you can go. All right. Okay. So basically, it's, I, I like to say it's like a holistic service what we provide because for each of these women, we sit down and we say, what's your business? Where do you want it to go? Where do you see your business 10 years from now? And then how can we plug in? Um, how can we provide a mentor for your business? What technological solution do you need? Do you need an HR system? Do you need a warehousing system? Do you need an inventory management system? Do you need a website? Do you just need digital marketing? And this is for all kinds of businesses from a a business idea to someone mm -hmm. who's like already established because okay. we have some women who who've been in existence their businesses have been around for 10 years <coughs> or more but they are seeking to go let's say global all right yeah perfect so yeah and then uh the women that we work with are like all types of businesses like she said it doesn't matter the size okay. but also it doesn't matter what you're selling even if you're selling tomatoes even if you're selling tourism or agriculture it, we don't discriminate we deal with all kinds of businesses at all stages of growth. Okay. Yeah. So basically what you, you help them do is align them as well as set projections for them or reorganize the whole business concept for them. Is that correct to say? Yes. yes. All right. But with a focus on IT. On IT. Because IT is the way to go. We don't want the women to ignore the window of opportunity that IT is offering to better their businesses. Okay. Yeah. And why the focus is on women is because Women lag behind economically, mm -hmm. either due to social or cultural or geographical restrictions. Correct. Yeah. IT will help us bridge that gap. Okay. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, just pretty much in getting to ask you a little bit more, because you said by the time you, you became mothers at pretty much a, a, a little bit an early age, if I should say, and you had to juggle between your work, family and all that, I know it's not an easy thing to do. But tell me, uh, what are the responses of, you know, I should say, the heads of the family at the time, knowing that that is what you want to focus on, where they're very supportive, because I want to know the role of men in that. Um, originally, when we shared the idea with our family and friends, the first thing they asked, uh, this looks like it's going to take up a lot of time. Is it making money? But you see, when you're building a brand or a business, your main objective should not be immediate gains. Correct. You should be able to look at the five-year plan. Correct. Yeah. So the business aspect of Zimba is the Zimba Group. The Zimba Group focuses on digital marketing for all businesses, whether led by men or women. Then the women part of it is our main focus at the moment because much as we want to go digital, we realize that the women are not ready. They need training on business skills. They need to know how do I make my business legitimate with the government because Correct. you don't want to get your business running, buy all these nice IT gadgets, and then have the government shut you down, mm -hmm. which is why we partner with the government, uh, URA, UIA, to help these women get the capacity they need to run their businesses legitimately. Good. And uh, for a fact, I've known that when women come to do something, there's a great force behind it. That's why we have these amazing ladies from uh, uh, Zimba doing this kind of great work. But I would like to further know from you, what sets you apart from other women organizations that are probably doing you know, work to support women 
across the globe, there's been a lot of women empowerment going on. What sets you apart from other women organizations? <laughs> I'll take that. Um, what sets us apart? Well, there's actually a lot of women. There's well, there's um, Uonet, there's uh, we too, so there's so many actually women movements, organizations, and we are basically all, we're doing the same thing. We are empowering women. The, what sets us apart is that we're focusing on entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. we're focusing on business, and IT, all three combined. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing which sets us apart is that we incorporate mentorship into this, not just mentorship in terms of business, uh, like connecting women to business mentors, but also we want to breed the younger generation, so that they hit the ground running. So that as soon as they finish school, they know that as an entrepreneur, this is what I want to do. As a person uh, pursuing STEM, which is for the initiated science, technology, engineering, and math, this is what I need to do to make it in my career. So incorporating both STEM and entrepreneurship is one of the things we are focusing on. Okay. And that's what makes us different from the rest, because they're either focusing on business, okay. or IT, mm. or just women empowerment. Okay. We have all those under our umbrella. Okay. And then again, uh, another thing which sets us apart is that we work with all these. Mm -hmm. We are willing to work with all of them because we recognize the fact that the ecosystem is big enough for all of us, and we're able to feed onto each, feed from each other. So creating, you know, sustainability because we are working together. Okay. We are not competing. We are collaborating. <laughs> Quite interesting. Uh, on a factual ground, I think during the, 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 the just ended summit I, early on, like I keep referring to, uh, I did see you know different women coming <coughs> from different places uh, across the country, uh, talking about their milestones. But uh, I would want to now ask you, what are some of the key milestones that you believe you have achieved or you've made since your establishment? Um, what I think that we've achieved is impact, to have somebody tell you a year from now, uh, a year from you know, the last time that you talked, that you know my business has, has got this much change. I've made this much money. I've be able, have been able to grow as a person. I've been able to start these networks. For us, that's one of our biggest achievements. Okay. It may not translate directly into monetary mm -hmm. for us, but to see that the women that we're working with have, e have been able to accomplish these things, then we know we've ha we have a big impact. Okay. Uh, are there any particular figures you can talk about to say this is the milestone? Th th these are the number of women we have actually impacted as as, as Zimba women. I'll, I'll just give you a ballpark fi figure. There, are, I think now a thousand women because we're actively wow. currently working with five hundred twenty-six, like okay. she mentioned. All right. But then we've done. We do monthly outreaches, mm -hmm. monthly sessions, and then online. So our reach is quite big. All right. And this 1,000, I'm counting Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania. That is pretty much a growth to talk about. But ladies and gentlemen, for now, we'll, we'll take a break. And when we return, we'll be able to focus more on a couple of areas to understand, you know, uh, what the two ladies also do outside Zimba. Looking at a country like Uganda and understanding that 83%, you know, it's a population of youth, you know, under 30, you know, it becomes a very pivotal uh, notion, you know, an important, you know, um, understanding to take in to find ways to continue breaking the poverty margin, you know, and in, in, in the Ojama Collective, what we're looking at is how do we confront uh, these uh, barriers that are systematically set up that we know you know, we definitely are capable of creating solutions to. You know, how do we tackle them? You know, by giving a generation an opportunity to look back and reevaluate on the missed gaps of information. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from that break. And uh, as mentioned earlier, today we're joined by two amazing ladies from Zimba, and uh, that is Peace and, uh, and Sharifa. Today they've been sharing with us you know, how Zimba women came about and what they're doing. And they're quite doing amazing work. 
But as mentioned earlier before we went for the commercial break, we'll have to know, you know, uh, what do you do outside of Zimba? What do you do outside of Zimba? Um, professionally? Maybe, even, you know, anyway. Uh, I work for <coughs> government agencies. So okay. Well, I won't mention which. <laughs> <laughs> FBI. Uh, <laughs> something like that. If I tell you, I'll have to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Basically, that's it. I'm a computer scientist full time. Okay. And um, outside Zimba, I'm a computer engineer. I work with the United Nations. Okay. In Entebbe. Okay. Peacekeeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. And then family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but pretty much related to the question I've just asked you. If, if you're not for the idea Zimba, women, what other idea will you be working on right now? I'd still be doing something regarding women. <laughs> okay. Because I'm very passionate about, uh, and this is not something that we, we are both very passionate about it, mm -hmm. about technology, because we are computer scientists, <laughs> we're both women, we're both mothers, so definitely there would be something around women, because I like, it's my tagline, I love betting on women. Okay. So <laughs> it would definitely be something like that. Okay. Yeah. I think like Sheriff I said, my focus would also be women, the girl child take because that's what I'm passionate about. And as far as mentorship is concerned, definitely because also for me, like our career you need mentors. Mm -hmm. And we had a gap, you know, when you were studying, when you early career, so we would definitely focus on women and girls and economic development. Basically, it would still be Zimba. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With the passion that I can hear right from uh, Peace and uh, Sharifa, I definitely can imagine the amount of energy they, they, they keep putting every day to, you know, scaling up other women. But uh, now I want to know, how does one become part of Zimba? Uh, to become a part of Zimba, you just, you know, reach out to the team, and we have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Each of the women that we have on our platform has had a one-on-one -on -one with any of us on the team. So they come over, we discuss what options we have for them, we register with them, and we keep in touch with them and check their progress like on a monthly basis. So it's just, you know, come, meet the team, and interact. Okay. Is there any, uh, maybe a money that someone has to pay for membership or... I know there, might, there could be something probably you could just explain maybe if there's any. Well, our members pay a subscription fee. Okay. Fifty dollars a year. Fifty dollars a yeah. year. Okay. But the benefits far outweigh that amount of money. Uh, the reason why we put a subscription fee is commitment. All right. Yeah. If you give it up for free, nobody is going to take you serious. Correct. Yeah. And then there's so much logistics around planning for each individual business. Mm -hmm. So we just want to, the women to be as committed as we are. And you know, sometimes the best commitment is a financial one. Is the fifty dollars paid at once, or that it is spread over a period of time? Well, preferably at once. Okay. But there's ex exceptions. Oh yeah, because I'm thinking, as you said, you it's open to everyone. I'm thinking down there, Newton, who is a tomato seller down in the village, that I want to be part of with Zimba women. Fifty dollars <laughs> is like, man, that's my capital for you know. You understand? Mm -hmm. But that, that's why I was asking if there's a period within which that can always be paid uh, for the women, you know? Yeah, like we said earlier, uh, we, can, we can meet with each of these women who wants to join and we discuss, you know, around that, the payment terms, what do they need from us, what kind of solutions they require for their businesses, both, you know, in a business perspective and in a tech perspective, mm. yes. Okay, quite interesting. Uh, so are there any particular sustainable, innovative uh, solutions Zimba has created for African women? that you'd like to talk about right now? Uh, um, well, it's the <coughs> e-commerce stores that we've managed to set up for different various women. Okay. That's basically our flagship. Okay. Yeah, getting women to trade online. Getting women to trade online. And uh, how is that getting along? Is it, you know... It's, it's, it's actually because your market is expanded. It's not just Uganda anymore. You're not trading just to your... Uh, your neighbors, your local market, it's you, you're exchanging goods to Kenya, to Rwanda, so yeah, that's been pretty. That's pretty much some work to do, I know. But uh, where do you see Zimba probably in the next five years from now? 
Zimbabwe women, you know, where do you see them five years from now? Five years from now, um, our long-term vision is to um, have one million merchants online, female merchants online that we are supporting. And you say five years from now, but we have a 10-year vision that we want <coughs> to actually start investing into these companies. We okay. started this year with the $300. Okay. Um, so I'll, in 10 years, we keep saying this, in 10 years we want to give a woman $3 million. $3 million? Yeah. A woman, $3 million. Why not a man, $3 million? Since you said it's open to any person. I said I love betting on women. <laughs> Come on, bet on a man for this time and we'll get even <laughs> next week probably. <laughs> All right. Uh, in, in any particular way you think you want to see, uh, you know, the, pain, the picture you want to paint for about Zimba in the next five years from now probably? Um, still focused on women. STEM mentorship. STEM, again, I want to explain is science, technology, engineering, and math. The numbers of girls in these subjects are really low. At school level, maybe, you know, it's almost a balanced number, maybe if like 40% to 60% men. Correct. But as we, go, as we go deeper into our careers, especially after university, the numbers go down. Our focus as Zimba in the next five years is to encourage more girls to pursue not only these subjects, but also in their careers, to provide mentorship on how to overcome the bias that happens with uh, anybody pursuing a, a main dominated field. So that's our focus for the next five years, in addition to the business uh, side of it. Which, of course, the two of you are living testimonies with what she studied and her background, as well as yours. Yes. That confirms that. Uh, pretty much, we'll have to say that the work you're doing is quite amazing. and. Uh, we, we very much look forward to seeing that you know this grows as we as as as, as we grow, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I'd love to say thank you so much for this uh, opportunity that we've been having here today, and I'd love to say that it's been an amazing discussion, uh, having peace and uh, Sharifa on the show uh, that is unpacked for tonight's show. We we'll want to say thank you so much, and uh, once again, I remain your host, Newton. Good evening.